Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hi, dynamic learners. Wish you a very great day. Wishing from Dr. A. Vijayamudha Meri, Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. So, in this video lecture, we are going to learn the properties of asymptotic notations. So, first, we are going to learn the arithmetic properties and then we are going to learn the properties which are specific to big O notations. So, the first property defined here is transitivity. So, this property says that if a function is bounded above by another function and that function is bounded above by a third function, then the first function is also bounded by the third function. So, this we can symbolically defined by f of n belongs to g of n and g of n belongs to f of n. So, that implies f of n belongs to h of n. So, for example, if f of n is n and g of n is n square and h of n is n cube. So, this implies that n is big O of n square and n square is big O of n cube and then n is big O of n cube. So, this transitivity property is applicable to both the theta and omega notations also. So, the next is the scaling property. So, this property is defined by if f of n is big O of g of n, then a into f of n is also g of n. So, if that function is multiplied by a constant factor also, the order does not change. Okay? It is still big O of g of n. So, we can see this by we can uh, have the uh, example now f of n is equal to 2 n square plus 5. So, we, this is a quadratic equation. So, complexity is given by big O of n square. So, then if the function is multiplied by a constant number, okay. So, this function f of n is multiplied by 7. So, that gives 14 n square plus 35. This is also a quadratic equation. So, the order does not change. So, if a function is multiplied by a constant number, okay, the order or the efficiency does not change, it is still the same. So, that is the scaling property. So, next comes the sum property. So, here we take two different functions f1, f2 and two different functions g1 and g2. If f1 of n belongs to big O of g1 of n and f2 of n belongs to big O of g2 of n, then f1 plus f2 belongs to maximum of g1 comma g2. So, this is the sum property. The addition of f1 f2 that is equal to finding the maximum value of the uh, functions g1 and g2. So, next comes the reflexivity property. So, this property says that every function is a subset of itself. So, this is given symbolically by f of n equal to big O of f of n. Similarly, f of n equal to omega of f of n and f of n equal to theta of f of n. So, this reflexivity property is also applicable for all the three notations that is big O, omega and theta. So, next is the symmetry property. This symmetry property only satisfies for theta notation. So, it does not satisfy for big O and omega. So, this property says that if f of n equal to theta of g, g of n, if f of n equal to theta of g of n, then g of n equal to theta of f of n. So, this is the symmetry property, very interesting. So, the next is the transpose symmetry. It is valid only for big O and omega notation. It is not applicable for theta notation. So, this says that the growth rate of a function f of n grows no faster than that of g of n. So, this is defined by if f of n equal to big O of g of n, then g of n equal to omega of f of n. So, now we are going to learn the properties that are specific to big O notation. So, the first one is the sum property which we have discussed already. So, yet let us see the definition. If there are two functions f1 and f2 such that f1 equal to big O of g1 and f2 equal to big O of g2, then f1 plus f2 
is equal to maximum of big O of G1 comma G2. This we have already learnt in the uh, previous slide. So the next is the multiplicative property. This property says that if there are two functions f1 and f2 such that f1 equal to big O of G1 of n and f2 equal to big O of G2 of n then f1 multiplied by f2 is equal to big O of G1 multiplied by G2. So this is the multiplicative property. When you multiply f1 and f2 that is equal to the multiplication of G1 and G2 both are same. So the next is another general property. If there exists a function f1 such that f1 equal to f2 multiplied by a constant c then f1 and f2 are equivalent. So that means big O of f1 plus f2 is equal to big O of f1 which is also equal to big O of f2. So this we discussed earlier that is if a function is multiplied by a constant the order of the function does not change. So if it is a quadratic equation even if you multiply by a constant say it is still going to be a quadratic equation. So that is the same. So big O of f1 is also equal to big O of f2 both are same. So the next property is again the transitivity property. If f of n equal to big O of g of n and g of n equal to big O of h of n then that implies f of n equal to big O of h of n. So we have seen the example for this in the previous slide. So the next property is in a polynomial the highest term okay the highest power term dominates other terms. For example here is a cubic equation given here that is 3n cube plus 2n square plus 10. So here the highest degree is 3. So therefore the time complexity is also given by big O of n cube. So it is a cubic order equation and hence the time complexity is given by big O of n cube. So the last property any constant value leads to big O of 1 time complexity that is if f of 1 equal to c where c is a constant then the time complexity is given by big O of 1. Okay. For example if f of n is 10 it is a constant number. Therefore, the time complexity for this f of n is given by big O of 1. So, thank you learners for patiently listening to the video. We will meet you again in the next video lecture. Thank you all.